Hi, Kate from Etsy here, and we're going to do a news roundup on Etsy in May of 2022. It's June 1st, 2022, and I'm just going to go over pretty much all the big news, the big announcements, the big updates on Etsy for sellers um, in the month of May. And there was lots of stuff, so I have lots of things to talk about. Some of these things are great. Some of these things are kind of like hmm, questionable. And some of the things are like, yeah, Etsy doing its thing and not really caring about the sellers. But I'm going to try and stay objective and just kind of point out some of the things in case you haven't been paying attention on what's been going on on your seller dashboard or what's been happening on Etsy in general in the past month. So one of the more recent updates just came out uh, yesterday about the changes to the Star Seller program again. Uh, so they're really trying to iron out some of the kinks and issues that people have been repeatedly bringing up about the Star Seller program and um, maybe making some improvements in my point of view. So really what they have done is change some of the criteria of to the program of being able to uh, become part of it and have those badges and qualify. So you have those three badges for shipping uh, on time, the message response rate, and then the five-star ratings. And when you qualify for all those, you get that coveted star seller badge, which, you know, I don't know if it means you make more sales or not. I haven't, I've qualified it for two times since it's been around, but it's tough with those four star ratings. Uh, you get one of those and then you're pretty much out of it for three months. So uh, depending on how many reviews you get month to month, but what they are going to do is adjust the, the five star ratings to, so basically you had to have a 90% 95% of your reviews had to be at least five stars, which is the maximum. So they had to be five star ratings, 95% of them over a three month period to qualify for the star seller. And that's very difficult to do, especially if you don't make that many sales. I think if you make a lot of sales, it may be easier, may not be, I don't know. But if you don't make a ton of sales, that one, like I said, one review that's not five stars, and it could even be four stars, which is still a great review, uh, will bump you out of there. So what they're going to do is they're going to make it a average of your reviews from the past three months, and they're going to total up all your reviews, divide by the number of reviews, and if that number is 4.8 or higher, you qualify. So I think that is definitely more achievable. Now, if you get a lot of three, two, and one star reviews, or even one one star review, it's going to be really difficult to make that up. So, uh, you know, you really want to make sure you give that great customer service. But if you get a four star review every once in a while, you can still qualify for the star seller program. So that I think that's great. Yeah, I get five-star reviews consistently, which is great, but then I do occasionally get that four-star review, and there's plenty of people out there that just don't give five-star reviews, and that's just how they are. So we don't need to be harassing customers who leave four-star reviews because that's a great review. So that's, um, I think that's a great improvement. I'm, I'm encouraged that they are changing it to this more of an average um, 4.8 is still a very high target. So I think that still is putting the cream of the crop, the top, the top, top, uh, sellers are getting only going to be getting this badge, but it is definitely going to open up to a lot more, uh, sellers, which I think is great. The next thing is they're going to improve the messages system, which is a huge weak point in my opinion on Etsy. Uh, the whole idea of responding to messages in 24 hours, I think is fantastic because a lot of, um, uh, the customer service we do provide is through the messages system and responding is 
quickly, I think is great for customer service. So, um, and if you can't do it because you're away or whatever, you can set up the autoresponder to say, I am away, I will get back to you in X amount of time or as soon as possible or whatever it is. And then that will apply to your messages so that you don't have to worry about responding personally within that 24 hours. But they are doing something to help with the messages that come in almost like spam from actual customers. And that is they send multiple messages and they're just clicking in different places on their platform on the customer's point of view to send you a message. And when they do that, then it creates a new thread. And it's very easy to respond to a customer that's in the same message or a similar message from two different places. You respond to one message and you see they sent the second message and you just kind of ignore it. And then you, the a computer algorithm that is calculating your star seller response rate sees that you didn't respond to a message and that gets tacked against you. Now, one way to avoid this is to just <coughs> either res respond to the message saying, I know I responded to your other message. I'm just letting you know the information again in this message thread so it doesn't get lost or simply marking that additional message as spam and then that prevents it from being marked. But they're saying in June, we're going to introduce a new and improved message experience that will start to combine messages from the same buyer into a single thread. So what this means was when someone sends multiple messages, it's going to be put into a single thread. I do have issues with this. I think this is great because it will help streamline that. The only issue I really ever have with messages besides this kind of inadvertent spamming of, from customers is that if a customer places multiple orders, how is that going to be handled? Because I do have problems with how when a customer sends multi has multiple orders and then sends multiple messages, those messages aren't attached to the appropriate orders. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this problem. I've pointed it out to Etsy a few times and I've actually messed up someone's order because of this. During Christmas time, when a ton of orders come in, one person orders three things to be sent to three different places as gifts. And then those messages that I rely on in the order tab, they get kind of jumbled and I don't realize that I'm, se I'm seeing a message that was for a different order. Anyway, rare occasion that happens, but now I'm going to have to be very cautious if that kind of thing happens around the holidays with a single thread and then sorting, okay, which order was this picture for and which order was this picture for, or the message, personalized message that they forgot to include in the personalization box or whatever it is and sorting it that way. Um, I hope that whatever they do with these message threads to combine them helps you sort them to attach them to different orders or something like that. I don't know because I can see that becoming confusing as well. And then also when someone repeat orders, so you may be seeing the same message from an order that they ordered a week ago, but they repeated and sent a new message. This is going to get a little bit confusing in that regard, but I think that this is an improvement in the messaging experience. And then they've also done something to lower the order minimum. Um, there was a, a, a order minimum that you had to have at least 10, uh, 10 orders in three months to qualify at all for the star, star seller program. They've lowered that number to five orders in the three month period, but they've kept the order total at $300. So those of you out there that sell higher priced items and maybe fewer of them, versus people who sell low price items, but more volume, uh, you will be kind of on the same playing field, uh, so to speak, evening that out a little bit. Uh, so those are the changes with the uh, Star Seller program. These were just announced yesterday and they also have a quick survey. So I have a link to all these articles in the description below this video. I recommend you read the articles yourselves, and then also whenever Etsy says, take this survey, I love to fill out Etsy surveys. I want to make sure I'm doing that so that 
uh, they can see how I feel about what they're doing. And I recommend all of you do that as well. One of the other updates that was sent out in May of 2022 was the Etsy Explore experience. So Etsy Explore is a new feature in the new Etsy seller app and in the customer experience in the Etsy app where they make purchases. And I noticed through my analytics that a lot of my sales are coming through that app and on a mobile phone now uh, more than on a desktop computer. So this is Etsy's way of kind of putting out more interactive things on the Etsy app so that customers stay on the app longer or interact with the app more. Maybe not making purchases, but maybe find the app to be a, a better place to just kind of hang out and browse. So that Etsy Explore feature allows us to post videos anytime we want, kind of like in a TikTok type style or Instagram Reels type of style, little short videos about us packaging our orders, talking about an item, showing how something's made, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want. Um, I've used it a few times. I haven't really attacked it as a daily feature, um, something that I kind of want to experiment with. And I recommend other people do too, if you want to try it out. Um, it's going to be, I think it's still in the Etsy seller preview app. I don't know if it's in the Etsy seller app at this time. I made a video this month all about Etsy Explore. I gave you a whole tour of the feature in the customer app experience so you can kind of understand what they're seeing because it is very actually complicated and all over the place. So you can go ahead to the channel uh, page and find the Etsy Explore video in the videos tab and check it out. I also have a template available for make on Canva for making your Explore videos if you want to use that that kind of because there's all these different crops that Etsy's doing to these videos. So you can kind of use that template as a guide when making your Explore videos, either when you're recording them or if you want to use Canva to make the videos. Um, so the changes that they've made to make them a little bit better, um, they've added, um, <clears throat> let's see, they've, what have they changed? Three new features. So we have real-time insights. So they give you um, some insights on uh, what's happening um, on the Explore homepage, what's trending and, and the video challenges, I guess, in there to kind of give you inspiration and ideas for your videos. So uh, that sounds really interesting. I haven't been in the app, uh, the AC Explorer feature, since they've made these changes. So if you have any insights on those, please leave something in the comments below. And let us know if you've had um, noticed some um, interaction with your Explore videos from customers or from just people browsing the Etsy app. You also, they are going to include stats and milestones to see what, um, what views your videos are getting, likes, and what sales come from the videos. So that's really interesting. That would be, that's some data that I think would be really important to know is, you know, what's the view what's the like ratio and then what's the sale ratio for different videos and video types. So that's lots of great data that we don't even get from apps like Instagram and TikTok really. So just having that direct result from a video we post and seeing those stats and those results, just having that information is amazing because then now you can see, okay, well this, this type of video is really popular when I post it on Etsy Explorer um, maybe that's some kind of template or idea or route I want to go with my TikTok and Instagram reels and things like that as a way to say, okay, I know the, this kind of content gets people to click through and purchase, you know, versus just liking something. I mean, yeah, people can like things, but we want them to click through and purchase. I mean, that's way more valuable. So I, I really like that feature with the stats. And they're also in, uh, including new and improved video types, which means when you post on the Explore, you pick what type of video is this? Is this a product showcase? Is this uh, packaging orders? And there was a couple other things, making items or your craft or behind the scenes or something. So they're adding how you use an item so you can show off 
how an item's used in this example, they show pouring, say pouring tea into a homemade mug, you know, that's how you use the item. And then um, another process is how you made an item. So you can select that as how you are actually making it. And um, the more views the video gets, the more exposure it will get in the explore feed. So there's an algorithm saying the more something is interacted with, the more it's going to be featured on the explore feed. So if you have a big audience on uh, YouTube or uh, TikTok or something, you can say, hey, I'm trying out this new feature on the Etsy app. Visit my shop and let me know what you think of the video feature on my shop. And you can send them to your to the app to look at your shop um, and like the video that's on the page. Or if you have friends and family that might do that, that might help boost it up the feed uh, in the Etsy Explore app for just everybody in the algorithm. This kind of stuff probably won't be effective down the road, but this is a new feature. So you can probably send traffic to your shop on the app and get people to interact with your video and that will help boost it in the uh, on the feed on the homepage. And it might not even be that much interaction needed to get that kind of boost since this is a new feature. All right, and then they're talking about um, what they're going to do next. So they want to, in, they're going to be looking into creating in-app editing tools, the ability to choose a thumbnail and crop your video and the ways to make it, the finishing touches easier. So that stuff's coming. Um, that'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, all right, so that is the updates with Etsy Explore. The next thing we were going to talk about is the um, mid-year report that Etsy put out in May of 2020. So they're just talking about the numbers of people, the number of shoppers, the number of sales, all the big numbers, and what they're going to be investing in marketing and who they're the people they're bringing. So in this article, they talk about who. Um, they added 7 million new buyers from January to March. And uh, since March of 2022, Etsy has increased the shoppers by 80% from 47 million to 89 million is quite significant. And they're just noting that buyers are shopping more frequently. So there's definitely a growing audience of repeat buyers. Um, they're starting to expand the audience um, in They've been outreaching specifically to men as a subgroup of Etsy shoppers that's been a majority and dominated uh, by women. And now they're reaching out to men. So they're seeing an increase in the percentage of men shopping on the platform. Uh, they're also <clears throat> noticing that there is um, 1 million unique shoppers in 2021 in seven categories, home and living, craft supplies and tools, jewelry, clothing, party supplies, and art collectibles and accessories. Each had more than 15 million unique buyers, which is pretty incredible. So those are the top categories right now on Etsy. Um, they've spent $154 million on marketing in the first three months of 2022, including TV ads and building their brand awareness around the world. So Germany and the UK are the other target, target countries besides the United States. And um, then the amount of money they sent to help out, uh, or not money, but in um, listing credits to Ukraine sellers and what they've done there. Um, they made $11 million in sales in March um, for those based in shops based in Ukraine. And then they're talking about what they're investing in the sellers. Of course, this is what we want to know about. So they're enhancing customer support, they're hiring more support agents to improve the ability to provide buyers and sellers with quick and easy issue res resolution. And this, I love this. I love this. I love this because I think if they have more customer support, they're going to start seeing patterns in these questions that customers are asking and that sellers are bas asking. And then they're going to want to reduce these consistent issues that come up. And because if they have 
a, a huge support staff, yes, these questions are getting answered quickly, but they can always reduce the number of questions that come in by solving the problems that are consistently cropping up every day constantly. Um, they mentioned keeping our marketplace safe and trusted for everyone. Uh, we know how much our buyers and sellers care about handmade goods. So we're investing in additional resources for policy enforcement too. And by representing a better buying experience and then by extension an improved seller experience, which is true, that will gar help garner trust in the marketplace, which is a big one. Cause it seems, I just hear anecdotally when I'm, watching videos online just from regular people who maybe from time to time shop on Etsy, they start, they start to get this kind of weird impression of Etsy sellers as, you know, not being actual handmade products, but just selling junk. And then connecting more buyers, buyers directly with sellers. So they're continually investing in search improvements and personalization to show more relevant results and for first time users and logged out buyers. So they're really trying to target those new users and send them relevant results instead of just relying on the information they've already collected based on your search history because you're logged into Etsy. Um, and I think that's a great feature too. So there's lots of things happening, lots of investment in Etsy that will hopefully ben benefit us as sellers. One of the other things that consistently gets updated on Etsy and kind of gets between the cracks a little bit is updates to the listing categories and attributes. So they, from time to time, add categories Sometimes they change attributes or add attributes and this stuff gets put in the seller handbook and the site updates blog and can sometimes get glossed over because it's not popped up in your uh, Etsy dashboard. Sometimes if it, it's, it's, if it's a product that you have a listing for, sometimes you'll see it. If you go in and edit the listing, they'll, they'll do a little, Hey, there's a new attribute notification. But often if you don't go in and edit your listings, uh, or if you have hundreds and hundreds of listings and you don't even know about this. So I'd just like to bring attention to these updates when they happen. So in May 2022, they added some new home and living categories. They added mug rugs. So I'm thinking that's like a coaster, but it's not a hard coaster. A soft coaster is a mug rug, I think. They added bed spreads and they added desk name plates. So it says relative listings will be automatically moved into these new categories. But so if you have something that's in one of these categories, you want to go in and check and make sure that Etsy put it into the right category. You know how it knows, maybe it knows from your tags and titles, but you need to double check those. They added new craft machine file categories. So they added new categories for craft machine files, including 3D printer files, cutting machine files, embroidery machine files, and knitting machine files. Again, they say they automatically move these to the correct categories, but if you sell anything that's even close to these categories, you need to check those listings and make sure that they are in the right category. And then new roller skate accessories categories, uh, two new categories for roller skate accessories, including skate leashes and toe guards. It's, you know, one thing that you can kind of tell from when reading these articles on these new category listings, you start to see, okay, like maybe this is a trend that's going on, or there's more sellers selling these items, or there's more people searching these items and not finding what they're looking for. So you can almost read into these category and attribute changes as possibly being upcoming trends. So if you make something that's in any of these spaces, that you can actually make specifically for these uh, attributes and categories, you might want to think about doing that because they're seeing this as a growing trend or space that want, they want to reach more uh, customers on who are searching for these things on Etsy. Okay, so that's a little hint that you can get from this article. All right, and then another thing that came out in May, came and went already, is the 2022 Etsy Design Awards. And there's an article in here that goes over 
um, how, best way of submitting and what to do and how to apply. The um, competition submissions were open from May 16th through May 27th. And this article went through all the tips and stuff. I'm not going to go into it since it's already gone by, but if you missed out on it this year, keep an eye out in your seller dashboard for when it pops up next year. I think this is a great thing to do and <coughs> excuse me, apply for anyway, even if you're not saying like, oh yeah, this is a winning item. I put, I submitted one of my favorite items with my customers one that I have like tons of amazing reviews, people crying, all this stuff, um, which I think is cool. I don't know if it would win an award, but I like the idea of people looking at my listing that maybe haven't seen it before. So I like the idea of that. And if it's people who are judging me or whatever, I just like that, like them seeing that listing that might be like something they want to look at again or recommend to somebody versus actually winning an award. I don't know. And that's how I'm looking at this. <laughs> Let me know if you submitted your uh, Etsy listing into the design awards and leave a link in the, dis in the comments below with your submission. We'd love to see it and uh, share and comment on it in the comment section here of the video. I'd love to see what people submitted. And one of the last things to talk about is the changes to the listing descriptions. Okay, it's not really a change to the listing descriptions. It's an enhancement with what um, Etsy is doing now is using your listing descriptions to help rank and sort your listings. So it's very important to use your keywords and your uh, good description in your listing description so that Etsy knows what your item is and can help customers find it. And the articles in the seller handbook all about Etsy listings have been updated with the new information. So if we scroll down in this article down to listing descriptions, here's where we see the new information. So Etsy search considers keys, keywords and phrases within your listing descriptions when ranking your listings. Keywords you use across your listing titles, descriptions, tags, categories, and attributes are essential when it comes to query matching. The first phrase in search ranking within each search algorithm. So they are looking at your title, your description, your tags, categories, and attributes. You want to make sure all those words are also in your listing description, but of course in a sentence that's easy to understand and will be making sense to the customer most importantly. So some tips they give you. Aim to incorporate relevant keywords in the first few sentences of your listing descriptions. Avoid copying your title verbatim or simply listing your top keywords. Instead, craft a sentence. So yes, this is like we want to tell the algorithm what we are, what it is, what the item is, what it does, who it's for, but we want it to make sense to an actual human being and continue to include important information that will help buyers understand your product. So yes, we want to be including our keywords and feeding that algorithm and the robot that reads the data on our listing page. But more importantly, we want to provide information clear and concisely to the customer that's using that listing description to help make a decision about whether to purchase or not. Okay. I did a video on listing descriptions this month as well. So if you go to my videos tab on the channel and look for the Etsy listing descriptions video, I have a really great uh, workbook template that I use to just crank out those listing descriptions quickly and easily. And I walk you through it. The video is kind of long because I always do very slow paced, methodical videos that so you can kind of do these projects along with me. But once you kind of figure out like the general idea um, of how that kind of basic template for writing listing descriptions works, you can really do them quickly and efficiently. And so if you need to either improve your existing listing descriptions or write new ones for items that you haven't listed yet, you can look at that video for some tips, maybe help writing your first few. Um, and if you really struggle with writing, and you really struggle with like coming up with sentences and words and phrases and stuff like that, there is an amazing hack in that video that will just blow your mind. So check that video out. The last thing we're going to talk about is 
just one slide in the Q1 2022 earnings presentation. We're just going to talk about this one slide and then I'm going to end the video. They were talking about investing deeper to make Etsy more reliable. So there's a lot of people out there that have been burned by Etsy shops or have heard of someone being burned by an Etsy shop and that makes them hesitant to buy or they had a difficult experience with their shipping or receiving their item. So what's going to happen? Well, there's a new program coming out to protect purchases that will be announced this quarter, meaning Q2. So in the next month or two, this is probably going to be announced. And they're, they're talking, they're saying this three in five buyers are unsure if Etsy would have their back if something goes wrong. Well, there you go. That says a lot. And then sellers similarly want us to support them when something goes wrong through no fault of their own. And this is the shipping issues, a stuff not making it to the customer. You put the item to the post office, they scanned it in, they brought it, it says delivered, and the customer says it's not here. What do you do? You know, you sent the item, you did everything right, and now the customer wants a refund or a new one. Um, so they're going to be doing some things to help with this problem because, you know, with Amazon being the big player and the prime shipping experience that so many people are used to, the rest of us who actually use regular mail system can have struggles and it's hard for customers to understand how it is different, but it is different. And if Etsy can do something to improve that experience and make it better for both sellers and customers to feel like I don't have to freak out if this doesn't get delivered or it gets lost or something like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. If, and it looks like they're going to address the concerns of the buyer, but also of the seller, because they mentioned it, both of those things here in this slide. So I don't know anything else more than that, but that's um, what was in the earnings presentation. That was kind of a little uh, bit of uh, inter uh, future uh, forecast for what Etsy is going to be doing in the next coming months. So be on the lookout for that. All right, so that is the Etsy News Roundup for May of 2022. Let me know if um, any of this stuff is interesting to you, or freaks you out, or you are happy Etsy made some changes in a positive way. Um, let me know in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.